to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now the religious leaders don't like the implication that they aren't free. And so in verse 33, they answer him. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Now that's an odd statement if you think about it. We've never been slaves. They were enslaved by the Egyptians for 400 years. During the period of the judges, they were oppressed by the Aramites, the Moabites, the Canaanites, the Midianites. Subsequently, the nation was conquered by the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. They say they've never been slaves. That's really revisionist history right there. But Jesus points to an even more important slavery. Verse 34, Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus' identification of himself as God's son launches a debate then about ancestry. The religious leaders say in verse 39, Abraham is our father. Abraham was of course considered the father of the Jewish nation. Jesus challenges this claim. If you were Abraham's children, then you would believe in me. Abraham was a man of faith whose covenant pointed to Jesus. In verse 41, they go further. We are not illegitimate children. The only father we have is God himself. This reference to illegitimate children is probably hinting at those rumors of Jesus' illegitimacy since Mary was pregnant before her marriage. Jesus responds in verse 42. If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. <laughs>